My name is Ranch and Jeff. I've just completed a, a journey from Northeast Wyoming back home for the holidays to California. <clears throat> Behind me, I think you can see, is the Pacific Ocean. And you're wondering, what in the world? What happened to the rest of the trip? You're at the, you're at the end. <clears throat> well, it was uh, Stephen Covey in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, who said, start with the end in mind. So, I'm starting at the end. Now, it was dark when I got in, so I had to come down the street and, and show you the ocean. Um, <clears throat> tentative series name on this video series is Where Jeff Goes. I'm stealing that from Mike. At uh, over at our our Wyoming life, I have trouble saying that every time. Our Wyoming life, his YouTube channel, uh, the last video that I was in on his channel for now is uh, was in the title "Where Jeff Goes." So I'm going to stretch that a little bit, take it with me where I go. So there you have it. <clears throat> Hope you enjoy watching the trip across from Gillette, Wyoming to Pacifica, California. And uh, it's pretty. It's pretty. <laughs>
I've been through here four or five, six times, and I see along the highways and byways, oh, wouldn't that be interesting to look at, stuff like that. Um, so today I've decided I'm going to stop and look at stuff. I'm going to check out America. Well, the western part anyway, for now. And I thought I'd bring you along. So right now we're about uh, an hour west of Casper, um, just west of Alcoba Lake, no relation, <laughs> at, uh, at Independence Rock. And I'll explain at some point, I get a read up on it, but. So it's a, a stopping point apparently on the Oregon Trail. Uh, Wyoming is kind of full of history if you look for it. So let's go take a look. That's a pretty big rock. It's like an old, an old highway. Pretty day across Wyoming today. Had a little bit of snow coming out of Campbell County, but not too much. And now it's uh, sun shining. It's in the 40s. And the wind's not blowing 40 miles an hour, so it's a pretty nice day. big rock when you get up next to it. It does, uh, it reminds me of Yosemite a little bit, the, the granite in Yosemite, only I'm not sure what this is. Lots of cracks in it. Evidence of harsh winters, freezing and thawing, and freezing and thawing. Can you imagine coming across here in a wagon, horse drawn? How many of us would survive it, you think? I think we might be a little soft. Not really a trail, but sort of around the back side here. <clears throat> here oh, that's cool. I would imagine this is to stop people from riding their bicycles through here or other vehicles that shouldn't be that'll just tear it up because as you may or may not have seen in other national parks some people have no respect they will tear it up given the opportunity. So they've negated that opportunity with those pass throughs. So 
and that's <laughs> getting old. That's a it's a big rock. What do you think? Should we climb it? The little kid comes out at me when I get in places like this. How can you resist? Going up's not terrible. Usually going down something like this is a little trickier in my experience. I still haven't seen any names carved in the rock though. modern inscriptions because <laughs> people just can't can't stop themselves from defacing some property apparently some rain here don't worry I'm not gonna pass out or anything I don't think I think elevation here is up above 4,000 feet and I don't know how I don't know how tall this rock is Pretty sure it's pretty high. According to the sign at the bottom, Doc Holliday's name is carved in here somewhere. Well, now, how we get there? Easy peasy. I was a big fan of westerns. This brings to mind a good hiding place. Coming across the prairie and the Indians are after you or, or the law. Get up on this rock and hole up in one of these. Oh, look here, bunny. Hole up in one of these places. It's defensible. Sort of protected from the weather if you, if you 
get down underneath. This is pretty cool. A little bunny living up here. I wonder where he gets food. There's no plant life. He must climb up for dinner. We are on the, the top of Independence Rock in Wyoming. And behind me is the prairie. If you've never stopped to see the beauty of the America, of the America, of the United States, you ought to. Yacht to. That's Y A W T. Yacht to. It's worth it. Because there will come a time, I believe, when you won't be able to see this. Either the smog will, will cover it, or development will. Either way, it'd be a tragedy to lose this country. Well, that could open up a <laughs> that could open up a political discussion, but I don't do politics. Well, I do, but not publicly. But just if you ever get the chance, take the time. Look at that. And in the springtime, imagine that green, and lush. Stop at the river to catch your fish, salt it and smoke it, feed you for a few days. My goodness. I don't know why I haven't done this sooner. There's water in a pinch. Survivalists could have fun up here. Build a little shelter. Oh, watch out for the holes. Who's this? I.J. Hughes, July 4th, 1850. Well, he's here with that other person. 1853. I don't know. I don't know who that is. Boy, they're hard to read. This is quite something. A. Pierce, June 15th, 1852. Wow. Well, it looks like I found it. Recognize any names though. Nobody famous yet. I imagine a lot of this is, is rather recent. You know how people are. 1853. B. Garrett. V. D. Moody. F. Uh, F. F. McKee. Huh. Pretty 
interesting actually. I wonder what made them climb up here to carve their names up on top. I think I might have carved them down at the bottom. I'm not sure how to get down now. It is a big rock. Can you see Lone Ranger and Tonto chasing a bad guy up here? Having to shoot out. <laughs> yeah, I'm weird. where you're going I guess you step in a hole it kind of hurts well I don't believe I'm going down that way I'm just really not sure how to get down off this rock There's got to be a way other than back the way I came. That's no good. All right. All right. That's uh, I think that's enough for now. Back there, I believe, is Sweetwater Creek. I'm going to try to get down there to it. But I'm going to need both hands, so I'll let you go for now. Yep. Okay. I'm back. And that up there. It was the way down. <laughs> Word of warning, when climbing rocks, whatever kind of rock this is, if you see a, a shady spot going downhill and there's dry moss in the sun, don't step in the shady spot. Wet moss, slicker than snot. I'm off the rock. That was fun. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. About 30 minutes west of Alcova. Alcova Lake, actually. So I'll see you later. far on uh, Wyoming 220 without coming across a National Historic Site apparently. I'm going to check this one out. I've driven past it over and over. I'm going to take a look. So I'm taking you along.
support of some kind. <coughs> like the the smithy's smithy's forge got out of control at some point sharpening stone anvil that's something Simulated burn section. <clears throat> the entire fort was eventually destroyed by fire. the storm I guess and get moving get, uh, get over to interstate 80 and get along get to our destination there you can see Devil's Gate a little better <coughs> A little better than the other view. You can see the break in the rocks. it was dark half of Nevada nothing special to see because it was dark uh, <clears throat> there's not much in Nevada anyway if you've ever been across 80 I 80 in Nevada there's not much there <clears throat> so here we are at a rest area somewhere I didn't know where I was until this morning I uh, <clears throat> got up and figured out I'm in I forgotten where I am east of Winnemucca, no, west of Winnemucca, so about halfway through Nevada. Uh, so there's nothing from here to San Francisco of any major interest. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll show you San Francisco before I go across the bridge. So uh, for now, that's it. I'll see you later.
these fruits, vegetables. Can't bring them in from other states because it's California item. So now we start to climb into the Sierra Nevadas. We'll probably stop up here somewhere. Probably Donner Pass if you've never been through the Sierras. A little bit of history there, obviously. And it's quite a climb, so you've got to pay attention. Got a little moisture coming down, but it's 50 degrees, so no snow yet. There's barely any up on the peaks, so I don't know what's going on this winter. So, talk to you in a bit. summit obviously uh, we've gained a little altitude elevation here is missing no network it was at 7200 when I pulled into the rest area we were at about 5,000 when we uh, went through the agriculture station so we just climbed 2,000 feet and I can feel it a little bit of snow a little bit of rain got some tourists over there throwing snowballs and uh, that's about it so they've there's been snow down to 7,000 feet this season so far not a ton but there is snow obviously most everyone knows the history of Donner Pass this is Donner Summit is where the unspeakable happened. Yeah, yay California. All right, let's get back on the road. I want to get out of this mess. See ya. In the San Francisco Bay Area, yay. This is the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge at commute time. Not my best planning ever, but it is what it is. And if we get a little farther, maybe we'll be able to see the city. Uh, we'll crawl through this and see if we can get a look at the city in just a few minutes. This is the tunnel through Yerba Buena Island, in the middle of the bay. No big deal. As you can see, there is a little bit of traffic ahead of us here. Maybe you can see, I don't know if you can see or not. Salesforce Tower. Sorry if you work for Salesforce, but oh well, it's 
it's an eyesore on the skyline to me. See the buildings or not. Francisco and there's the, out there. Oops. the bay you can't see the lights of the ships through this so I still have 10 or 12 miles of traffic to deal with so I'm gonna put you down and perhaps we'll end this tomorrow at the coast We'll, uh, we'll see how the ocean's doing, maybe. All right. See you later.